Coming up, a new book from the author of Station Eleven. A story about what it would be like if we could save and trade our memories like JPEGs. Plus, our distraction of the week. I'm Mel. I'm Dave. This is the Library of Lost Time. My new book pick of the week is The Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. The story begins at a dinner party in the British countryside in 1912. So already, I'm in. Sure. Other threads of the story take place on Vancouver Island in 2020 Brooklyn, a moon colony in 2203, and the year 2401, when a time-traveling detective is hired to investigate a mysterious musical glitch experienced by the characters across time. A musical glitch? Yes. If you've read Mandel's previous novels, Station Eleven and The Glass House, you know she's a master of creating complete worlds populated with characters that feel lived in. That is a special kind of magic. The Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel is out now. My book is The Candy House by Jennifer Egan. Jennifer Egan is probably best known for A Visit from the Goon Squad. That book won the Pulitzer Prize in 2011 and was named one of the best books of the decade by Entertainment Weekly. In The Candy House, an executive discovers how to store memories. Every memory you've ever had can be stored and traded with others. Seems like it could be fun to get some of other people's memories. And also dangerous. Definitely. This is a character-driven sci-fi book that jumps through times and writing styles and perspectives. You might want to read it with a friend just to talk about it. If you're curious about the book, you can read or listen to an excerpt by going to her site, jenniferegan.com. We'll put a link on our site. The Candy House by Jennifer Egan is in bookstores now. The Library of Lost Time is brought to you by the Strong Sense of Place podcast. In every episode, we get curious about one destination and discuss five great books that took us there on the page. If you like books and travel, check it out. You'll find it at strongsenseofplace.com slash welcome. And now, our distraction of the week. I'm going to guess that when I say the name Salvador Dali, you do not think of food. No, mostly I think of his eccentric mustache and the melting clocks. It turns out that the Surrealist painter threw legendary dinner parties. The most infamous has to be his 1941 bash, known as the Surrealistic Night in a Surrealist Forest. Guests were instructed to dress in costumes inspired by their dreams. His wife, Gala, hosted from a massive king-sized bed. Dolly was married to a woman named Gala? Of course he was. The hotel ballroom was transformed into a magical grotto and decorated with thousands of real fir trees. Live monkeys and baby lions borrowed from the San Francisco Zoo scampered around the room, and guests included Alfred Hitchcock, Bing Crosby, and Bob Hope. The first course was fish served in a satin high-heeled shoe. Soul. Soul. You get it? Yeah. Good joke. (laughs) (laughs) It's kind of a dad joke served in an artist's frame. As usual, getting curious about Dolly led me down a deep rabbit hole of things that I was previously ignorant about. Although Dolly was wildly successful as a fine artist, he used to do work for The Gap and Vogue, and he designed the logo for Chupa Chups, the Spanish confectioner. Chupa Chups. Chupa Chups. It's so fun to say. It is. And my journey ended by looking at a joint project he did with Walt Disney. I mean, that's an obvious pairing. It's a surrealistic animated short about a ballerina. They did not finish it during their lifetimes, but Walt's nephew got it done in 2003, and now you can see the whole six minutes online. It will stay with you. Visit strongsenseofplace.com slash library for links to all the good stuff about Dolly and that wild dinner, and to learn more about the books we mentioned. Thanks for joining us in the Library of Lost Time. Remember to visit your local library and your independent bookstore to lose some time yourself. Stay curious. We'll talk to you soon.